Hi and welcome back. I'm excited to be with you again and to show you some new tangles today. If you remember from my first video, or if you've practiced Zentangle before, you'll remember one of the first steps in the process is to make our corner dots. And I'm just going to jump right in today, make this a little bit faster uh, or quicker um, video for those who like to move a little bit faster. So I've done my four dots here and I'm just going to draw a border around to give myself some space to work in. And then today I want to show you a fun um, meditative design that um, I'm not sure if there's a name for this. It's just one that I do a lot and I find it really satisfying from a focus and concentration perspective and also because I love the finished product. So the way that I start this is really open and loose and that just is with my very first triangle somewhere within this space. And you could start against a border if you want to by drawing your first line and then building your triangle out from there, or you can start right in the middle. In this case, just for demonstration, I think I'll start here on the side. And I like to make my triangles sort of large and um, because I'm going to be working inside of them. And so if I can make them large to start with, with a, a pretty decent size um, space, then it's going to be easier in the long run. And all I'm going to do at this point is just draw concentric triangles as close to the same size as I can, which as you can see is not very perfect. And you know what? In Zentangle there are no mistakes. And perfection is not the goal. So I'm starting this process with the series of triangle shapes around my tile. And if your triangle doesn't fit quite right, we'll just adapt it to the size that you have or ignore your border or ignore your string. It's your work and you get to decide how you want to do it. So I'm going to do this. Another triangle. Now I might choose to diverge a little bit and go off the path. Uh, and by that I mean just not finish this section. I'm going to just go over here. Maybe I'll take it up like this. lovely triangles. The triangle is such a solid shape in my mind. I kind of like that. I think that's interesting like that. I'm going to stop now, knowing I can always go back and add more. But now inside of the triangles, I'm going to do a repeating pattern. I'm going to put a circle in the middle of each one. When I've taught Zentangle classes to adults, what I hear a lot is that it's so accessible and you'd be amazed at how many people have a voice in their head from around, oh, eight, nine, ten, eleven years old. Someone in their life told them they were no good at art. And for some reason they believed it. And so for a lot of people, doing this kind of thing is actually really frightening and well, I, for others it's, it's definitely not frightening but for others it's uh, for those that have not just a fear, it's a fear of having to do it perfect or having to do it right 
not wanting to be admonished or not wanting to mess up the paper or um, afraid that they're going to make a mistake and it will be irreparable and they'll have to throw it away or something to that effect and it's really debilitating for people that kind of fear and I, I'm so thankful that my parents were always so encouraging to me it was a tactic in fact my mother <laughs> used often in, at church and she would give me a pencil or a pen and the church bulletin or a piece of paper, a receipt, or something from her purse, tell me to draw pictures. And I would usually just draw little designs and doodles and all kinds of patterns up and down the sides. And so I was encouraged to do that, and it kept me quiet and kept me focused. And I'm sure that that's where I sort of got the habit of doing this type of thing as a way to bring myself mental peace and quiet. I'm a pretty energetic person in some ways and I think fast a lot of the time and move fast and this is the opposite of that kind of frantic or frenetic pace that I have often been operating at. You'll see what I'm doing here is drawing a straight line from each corner into this center circle within each triangle. And this is an example of a, a lovely secondary pattern or a meta pattern, some people like to say. That's it. Looks great just like that, doesn't it? So now I'm going to add another layer of kind of depth to this. So I'm going to go back in and um, draw uh, an aura around those center lines. Watch what I do. I'm just going to aura that line, go right up to the circle but not touch it, and then go down. And I'm going to do that every place. It takes a little bit of concentration, but it doesn't have to be perfect. A shaky hand makes a beautiful line as much as a, as a solid hand that doesn't shake. And so, for those who feel intimidated by being able to make lines that don't wobble or wiggle, I encourage you to simply see the beauty in the wiggly line and not find that only a straight line has interest to it. You start to see that secondary pattern appearing here pretty nicely. Remembering to breathe and not hold my pen too tightly and keep my pace where I'm both focused and relaxed.
I think that it's coloring page or coloring um, phenomena that you know has been such a, a popular thing over the last five to ten years is due partly to the fact that people are you know seeking solace and quiet and ability to um, compartmentalize their lives in some way and so needing an escape sometimes from our regular daily stresses this uh, type of applied art or applied meditation has become very popular and you see that with coloring books and mandalas and um, a variety of different uh, methodologies that have in common the meditative aspect of them. In a future video I'll do some mandala work and share how I do those, how I approach a mandala. It's a beautiful process and uh, very organic for me. I don't plan how I do them. I really look to see what how it will end up at the at the end. Almost done here. I'm running out of triangles. <laughs> I love how it looks. It's so dramatic and powerful in a way. These triangles with these bold center pieces in them. Oh, I might have done that one twice. <laughs> All right, let's see. That's nice. I think the next thing I'll do is shade this and we will have what we call a mono tile, which is a tile with only one design throughout it. And I'm going to do my shading by putting down some pretty heady, heavy graphite in this space where the triangles come together and there's no, no dot there where in each of these corners where they come together. And We'll see how that looks. I think that's all of them. Um, it's possible I've missed one. I don't really think it's I could do it's this is where one of those uh, rules that sort of applies where it's not realistic to put to, to shade in this corner because there's nothing next to it. <laughs> so it's one of those little just a I don't know, it's not even a rule. It's just it doesn't make sense to me to do that. But but someone else might think it makes perfect sense to do that and put and and shade it every place that there's a corner. And so that's the, one of the joys of this is it's open to anyone's interpretation and certainly the different ways that you do them. I love to lay the tiles down next to each other when I'm teaching a class at the end so that I and everyone else in the class can see the variety of things that people produce all using the same instructions and the same tools and their scale is different, larger and smaller, their pressure weight of their pen and their pencil and the um, where they put the string and the border and everything about it and they just simply look beautiful together. There's something that looks sort of like community and a shared experience but at the same time an independent and individual uh, interpretation which is just so nice to see. Here we go. Look at that. Doesn't it look great? I 
just love it, love it, love it. So that's my mono tile for today. I'm going to leave this um, border uh, here that I've drawn because I like the way it looks, even with the completed piece. But you might choose to erase that um, or to continue tangling in these spaces. Um, for the sake of my, for the sake of time today, I'm going to stop this video now, sign it. And thank you for being here, and thank you for sharing this time with me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps me. You'd be amazed. <laughs> Just helps my videos to rise to the top when people are looking for something like this. So really appreciate your support, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.